<laughs> this video is the first time this the first filmed evidence of our our new haircuts. Uh, <laughs> today we are reviewing Super Mario Brothers, the original one for the Nintendo Entertainment System. We wanted Vermeer to be involved with this as well, but he uh, was not confident that he knew enough about the game <laughs> to to add anything. So today I am joined by Erica Heyman, who, who you've seen on her Michael videos before, but she also is an expert on Mario games. She knows about as much as anyone that I know. And is currently giving Remain just a little bit of shade. <laughs> just a little bit. Super Mario Brothers came out in 1985, and that's so, this game is as old as I am, and I never really remembered it not being around. That's kind of a nice way to think of it. Yeah. They were always there. They were always at home with you. Yeah. Especially through all of the later iterations of Mario, I kind of feel like I grew up with Mario a little mm -hmm. bit. A lot of us did. It's this whole series of video games is very definitive for our generation. Because mm -hmm. I was born in 1982, so I was three when that came out. Clearly, I don't remember it, but right. we all we all kind of grew up together at the same time, and along with MTV and Oregon Trail and all those things that sort of define people who are now in their thirties. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I had also written up. Uh, like a prose review of this, which I may also post on the Michael Facebook page. My review started with talking about how this game does not have a good plot, and there's nothing really all that interesting that happens. You go to the right, you jump a lot, sometimes you throw a fireball, and by World 2-2, you've done everything that you need to do in the game. But that is not what is important about this game at all. This is still just such a great game um, for many other reasons, although the story is not really bad. It's just not the same type of thing that we're used to now. And most of my personal criticisms of the game are of things that we are much more cognizant of now than we were in 85, at least to my knowledge. And, um, but that also doesn't mean that we shouldn't be critical of media that exists beyond our current scope of what we feel is correct or right or good about things. I don't think it's wrong to give a negative opinion of some aspect of something that you love. No, there's nothing wrong with it as long as we kind of also just accept with that, okay, there's nothing we can do. The most important thing is that we acknowledge it and yeah. Try, yeah. To, try to improve and evolve the video game industry generally as we go along. Nothing is perfect. Humans aren't perfect, so everything they create is not perfect. So we are going to start with story. I have I, I, this, I kind of gave this a, all a mixed bag in my scores. Like, overall, I gave Story a 2 out of 5 points, but that's mostly because of the pacing and the tropes, which are all fairly cliche as, as things go, and the pacing, there's nothing of an arc of intensity. There's a difficulty increase with each level, but the there's no storytelling arc to the game at all. Uh, but where this game really shines, and I think everything is really successful, is just this the world that is created by the game. Um, it, it, it is so colorful and fun and exciting all the way through that there's just... I can't imagine not being caught up in it. Yeah. I, I agree with some of that. I'm actually looking at my database score here, and, and I think I might have been overly generous by giving the story overall a 5 on this. Because you're right that it is simple, there's not really anything to it. But I think that I might go down only to a three just because, yeah, there's not a lot of story here and it's pretty straightforward, but the game itself and the gameplay is benefited by that and mm -hmm. lends itself to that in equal measure. You know, like if we had had a more complicated story with this side-scrolling adventure that was meant to be primarily about reflexes, right. it wouldn't necessarily have worked quite as well. And, and granted, like comparing a platformer to an RPG is sort of not fair because RPGs are about the story and the character development. 
and platformers are about playing a fun game. So You know, I think this might be a general idea of why certain kinds of games appeal to certain kinds of people and vice versa because board games go the same way as this. Like some of the most popular games in history like Monopoly and Sorry and even Clue don't have as much of a plot or a story to them. I mean, Clue has a serious plot. And that, that shit gets real. Right. But, you know, like, those are some popular games that, okay, you've got this rich guy in a couple of streets and some money to hand out, and a lot of families fight over it. That's the basic gist of the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's still excellent gameplay. It's just not for everybody. Whereas the RPGs, where you're rolling the dice and developing a character, sometimes that's too complex for certain people, and some people, like, they can't play anything less than that complex like, yeah. because it's not yeah. enjoyable for them. So yeah. it depends on what kind of person you are and just what you're in the mood for in general. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Anything else that you want to say about the the world that Mario creates? I love the aesthetic value of Mario. All of the Mario games have this... Well, first of all, they're visually, visually appealing. Nothing has been like them before. And... I love how consistent that world has remained over the years. Ever since that first one came out in 1985, this world is very recognizable. It's almost like Bugs Bunny in that way. Like you instantly know exactly where you are, who you are, and what you're supposed to feel like. Yeah. And whenever we see a poster or just a video or something, and we see something from Mario, any of these worlds, it's like, oh, that yeah. touches my heart. Yeah. Because you know exactly where you are in that place. Everybody knows that little cloud shape. Everybody knows what that turtle shell means. Yeah. And that, that this sort of ties into another thing about story that Eric and I were just talking about a minute ago, about how a lot of people don't know that, uh, unless they read the game booklet that came with the original Mario game, but the actual plot of the game is that King Koopa, I don't think he was Bowser yet. I can't remember. It comes in and storms the Mushroom Kingdom and turns almost all of the people into bricks and hills and clouds and things Koopas. like that. Yeah, and, and mushrooms. And mm -hmm. and that's that's why everything has a face in the game. And like Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> yeah. Princess was captured after that because she was the only one who could change everyone back and i thought that was it that's an interesting side of this that we never talk about we never talk about princess's magic powers mm -hmm. in, or her background at all like yeah. why is this awesome beautiful human over here like being kidnapped can she not take care of herself right and, no right. she can she actually has, there's a reason she's being locked up yeah yeah it's not just because She's pretty. It's not just some weird, like, I'm going to marry you thing. Mm -hmm. Although in some games later on in the series, Bowser is trying to marry a princess. But yeah, they did try that once or twice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at least early on in the series, it was just because she had power that he didn't want her to use, which I thought, I think is an interesting thing that doesn't get discussed much. All right, so we, we've already sort of segued into the next topic of characters. And this is where... For the most part, the game really shines because the it, all of the characters in this are so fun, and you can say that just that Mario and Luigi are just Italian plumbers, and that's not super interesting. And that may be true, but still, like all of the villains, all the down to the the smallest Goomba, are just so interesting in the game. They're, they're, um, I was talking about how like. Yeah, it's just this carnivorous plant that spits fireballs and lives in a pipe, you know. <laughs> like you do. Right, this 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 thing that rides a cloud throws turtles with spiky shells at you, you know. I mean, who <laughs> wouldn't want to do that with their lives? <laughs> All of these characters have been with us for so long that we sort of forget how delightfully weird they are mm -hmm. and how much fun they are. And how unique they are. Yeah. Even now, that kind of concept hasn't really been created, recreated. Right. And even in the newest iterations of all these games, these characters are still fun. Mm -hmm. That's why they keep reusing them and it's that creating that world again. It's, yeah. uh, they're sticking with the universe that they've created like any good story does and 
reinforcing it, sometimes tweaking it a little bit with improved graphics or different sounds or whatnot. But there is also this element of free play within a world that you recognize that continues throughout the games and that that in itself has a lot of value and that's part of why this game is so creative yeah in the character setting where i do dock points is in um diversity and gender parity just and this it's another thing that's it's a product of the times it's the the only two playable characters are white italian men but I don't know, I, I could also envision a different, you know, reality where the two characters who are saving Princess aren't as genderless. That, that, that wouldn't change much about the game, really. Um, or, you know, if the person that was being rescued was also genderless. That, you know, that... But that that's also, you know, they, these are so baked in now that... It's not like I'm suggesting that they should be changed because that's ridiculous at this point. Eric and I were just playing on um, Super Mario All-Stars, which has updated graphics and sound for everything. And they changed everything. Like they gave Mario his, what, his outfit that we're used to seeing, which is the blue overalls and the red shirt, um, which is... We were griping about how the updated graphics for this game have made it lose some of the charm but also i think it that like the the red and green switch to blue and red that's a change that i am here for and i'm glad they did that one you're biased because you're red green colorblind well <laughs> <laughs> but you're not wrong there's a certain amount of finagling that the graphics can and should undergo especially when they're upgrading from like the original nintendo to the super nintendo Ba-doo-ba-doo-ba-doo-ba-doo! Wee! Wee!